May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Graciously grant to your church, O merciful God, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, she may be devoted to you with all her heart, a united in purity of intent, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At Melitus, Paul spoke to the presbyters of the church of Ephesus. Keep watch over yourselves and over the whole flock, of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, in which you tend the church of God that he acquired with his own blood. I know that my departure, savage wolves will come among you, and they will not spare the flock. And from your own group, men will come forward, perverting the truth to draw the disciples away after them. So be vigilant and remember that for three years, night and day, I unceasingly admonished each of you with tears. And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you the inheritance among all who are consecrated. I have never wanted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You know well, you knew well, that these very hands have served my needs and my companions. In every way, I have shown you that by hard work of that, so, of that sort, we must help the weak. And keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, it is more blessed than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and prayed with them all. They were all weeping loudly as he threw their arms around Paul and kissed him. For they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again. Then it, they escorted him to the ship. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth. Show forth, O God, your power, the power, O God, with which you took our part. For your temple in Jerusalem, let the kings bring you gifts. Sing to God, O kings of the earth. You kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Chant praise to the Lord, who rides on the heights of the ancient heavens. Behold, his voice resounds, the voice of power. Confess the power of God. Sing to God, O kings of the earth. and on this kind of gospel, worthy and well, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. According to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one, just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me. And I guarded them, and none of them was lost, except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world, so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but do you keep them from the evil one? They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world, and I consecrate myself for them, so that they may also be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to start with the first reading, then move on to the gospel. We heard in our first reading, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And Paul says, keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said. Keep in mind the words of the Lord Jesus, who himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So what gospel is that in? Sounds like Sermon on the Mount, Gospel of Matthew. But actually, it's a trick question. It's not in the Gospels. Paul says, the Lord Jesus himself said this, but it's not in the Gospels. Is Paul misleading us? No. 
the Gospels contain the inspiration of the Holy Scripture, truth of what Jesus said and did. But not everything he said and did. And so, through oral tradition, there were sayings of his that they hand on from word to mouth, word to mouth, but were never written down. And this is one of them. More blessed to give than to receive. To give is an act of love. It's love in action. And we're called to, to love. And what we give doesn't have to be something tangible, which is but good. When we help the poor, we give something to the poor. Yes. But the giving also includes the giving of the holiness of life, the giving of our virtue. As I preached this past weekend, that our life impacts those around us. If we are living a virtue that positively impacts those around us, we are giving them an encounter with virtue and love. And so even the poorest person on the world can still give. They give love, mercy, patience. So be careful about thinking about this just in a tangible. I give somebody something tangible. But sometimes what they need is not something tangible, but something more intangible. Mercy. Forgiveness, love. So when you hear blessed, more blessed give than to receive, that give includes everything, not just tangible things, but giving them love and mercy. Also includes giving them the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me read to you a little bit from a commentary on today's gospel passage. Jesus now asked the Father to give the disciples four things. Unity, perseverance, joy, and holiness. By praying, by, by praying him to keep them in his name, he is asking for their perseverance in the teaching he has given them and a communion with him. An immediate consequence of this perseverance is unity, that they may be one even as we are one. This unity which he asked for, for his disciples, is a reflection of the unity of the Holy Trinity. He also prays that none of them should be lost, that the Father should guard them and protect them, just as he himself protected them while he was with them. Thirdly, as a result of their union with God and perseverance, they will share in the joy of Christ. In this life, the more we know God, the more closely we are joined to Him, the happier we will be. In eternal life, our joy will be complete because our knowledge and love of God will have reached its climax. Finally, he prays for those who, though living in the world, are not of the world. They may truly be holy and carry out the mission he has entrusted to them, just as he did the work of his Father. Now, the world, the flesh, and the devil are a band of adventurers 
who take advantage of the weakness of our fallen human nature. In exchange for the glittering, glittering tinsel of pleasure, which is worth nothing, they will want you to hand over to them the pure gold and the pearls and the diamonds and the rubies drenched in the living and redeeming blood of your God, which are the price and the treasure of your eternity. God wants our happiness, yes. And the world, though, wants to tempt us away from our Lord. The evil wants to tempt us away from our Lord with pleasure. Our Lord said, go to the Gospel of Matthew. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. Matthew 7, 14. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. We are tempted by pleasure to stray from the way. Look at the lives of just two saints. Saint Damien of Molokai, working with the lepers on Molokai was not easy. Take up your cross and follow me. The work of Saint Teresa of Calcutta with the poorest of the poor was not easy. Take up your cross and follow me. Temptation to pleasure, to stray from the path of our Lord has for us, which is hard work because we're opposed by the evil one. The temptation to leave that path. And so our Lord prays to protect it from the evil one, who not only wants to create disunity and division amongst Christians, but he also wants to divide us from Christ. He does that a lot of times with pleasure. Do this instead of praying. Do this instead of doing this for God. Do this instead of building his kingdom. And this, this is something very pleasurable. That video game, whatever it may be. Our Lord mentions the devil and the evil one frequently. He's not a boogeyman of our imagination. The evil one is real. He's a fallen angel who wants us separate from our Lord. He does it frequently, as I mentioned, with pleasure. Spend our time doing something else rather than building the kingdom of God. To sow division rather than build unity. This priestly prayer of our Lord that we've been reading from this week is right before he's arrested. What's on his mind before he's arrested is all of us. He's praying for us. God is for us, not against us. And we see that clearly as our Lord prays. Amen. Amen.
In faith and confidence, we bring our need of petitions to the Father. For our Pope, bishops, and priests, may their preaching and teaching draw all of humanity to the truth, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. For peace of heart and peace of mind for all those around the world who are anxious and fearful, for good health for all healthcare workers, and that our efforts to combat the coronavirus will be successful. We pray to the Lord. For those burdened with economic hardship, may they be encouraged by God's promise to be with us always. We pray to the Lord. For all of us, that we may always seek the truth, strive to live as Jesus taught, and never be led astray by those who distort the truth, we pray to the Lord. For our parishioners, family members, and friends who are ill, and for those who have contracted the coronavirus, that God grant them healing and comfort, we pray to the Lord. For our friends, family members, and parishioners who've died, and for those who have died as a result of the coronavirus, that they may behold the Lord in all his glory in heaven, we pray to the Lord. For those needs and intentions that we hold within the silence of our hearts, and for the intentions of Alan Kelly, the intention of this Mass, We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, keep us under your watchful care and answer our prayers according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through you is the seed of the bread we call for you. Fruit with the earth that work in human hands we come for us of the bread of God. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through you is received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual fruit.
Thank uh-huh. 